Of course. Do we know exactly what, what happened? No, but we know that this was allowed to happen, bare minimum. There's ABC News. Still secret. 28 pages that could change our understanding of 9-11. I've been told by the congressman on this show and military intelligence people on this show that have seen it, what it says. Senator Graham, former senator of Florida, 9-11 commission, has said what's in it. We know what's in it. This ally of ours funded the 9-11 terror attacks and has been dubbed the Great ISIS by Colonel Sharaf Luckman, the official spokesman for the Yemeni Armed Forces, a region that has experienced exponential war crimes undertaken by Saudi Arabia and supported by the United States. In a related report on British arms sales, Robert Perkins wrote, Yemen is the worst country for civilian deaths and injuries from explosive weapon use in the first seven months of 2015. The Saudi government has been very elusive with the evidence connecting them to the bankrolling of ISIS. It has officially condemned the Islamic State along with al-Nusra, the Muslim Brotherhood, Yemen's Houthi rebels, and Saudi Hezbollah. Wealthy Saudi and Qatari citizens, however, continue to fund and support Sunni Wahhabist groups in the Middle East, including ISIS, al-Nusra, Liwa al-Tahid, Arar al-Sham, Jaish al-Islam, and other jihadi fighters in Syria. And none of these wealthy agitators have been beheaded. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists notes, a good portion of the funding for the ISIS and similar terror groups such as the Al-Qaeda affiliated Al-Nusra comes from Sunni elites located in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the Gulf states, countries that are ostensibly U.S. allies. John Bound for Infowars.com. And all you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? We got people that have taken your asses out in this building right now. We're armed to the teeth, and we're not scared. You got that, you sons of bitches? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. president just add puppet then vote and repeat every four years introducing secret 12 the new infowars life vitamin b12 formulation now infowarslife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive powerful form of b12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of b12 secure your revolutionary secret 12 formula right now at infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. I'm not gonna sit here and take it anymore. David Knight for InfoWars.com. Now we're here in Philadelphia. The Pope is visiting. And this street that you see behind me with all these barriers, this is typical of what they've done to streets throughout the Philadelphia area. Last night, Jakari Jackson and I got in. They had shut down taxi service, so we had to walk. It was, would have normally been about a 40 minute walk. It turned into a two hour and 15 minute walk because of so many barriers, so many shut roads, so many shut bridges. Now the Pope is here to lecture us on an economic system. He wants a socialist redistribution system. He says that the free market, that capitalism is broken. Well, I would agree. It hasn't existed in this country for quite some time because our economic system is like this road system. Barriers are erected for you and I, for the common people. The elites have barriers set up to protect them, to keep you down, and then the government works with them, escorts them at your expense, just as this has all been done at the expense of the taxpayer. They set up these protections, escort them through, give them special treatment. Now, a good example of where this is going in the global elitist scheme is Uber. When we were in Washington, D.C., we talked to a taxi driver, and he explained to us how barriers that have been set up for taxis, traditional taxi services, don't exist for Uber. Here's what he had to say. I get you to repeat that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so you're one day out on your taxi license, and they give you an $1,100 ticket, ticket on that. Yes. Okay. You've got to get a license up here, okay? They don't have, Uber doesn't have to have that. You pay insurance yep. at a higher rate. Yeah. Is that right? We pay high insurance on our car. For example, if you get a new car right now, we are required to get the lease 2008. Look at this car I'm driving now. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with this car. Mm -hmm. No light showing, no nothing. We go through every six month inspection, which mm -hmm. means your car must be good to pass inspection every six months. Now we are forced, probably because of Uber, to go and get the late model car. Mm. For a, for a taxi, you're gonna have a full coverage insurance on that new on that new uh, new car that you get for taxi. You still gonna be paying a taxi insurance mm -hmm. that make mm -hmm. double insurance that you are paying. Yeah. Whereas who might just get a regular car, a regular person, regular driver's license, no mm -hmm. professionalism, and they're driving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The you, playing you field it, are not the same. You said you have to get uh, background checks by the FBI? You have thing? to go through background check. Wow. Wow. You have to go to uh, a drug screening and you have to go to medical, uh, physical test every six months. Now, when, when does this kick in with the 2008 I mean, uh, requirement of 2008 vehicle? Is that something that, uh, are they going to grandfather in people who have uh, existing taxis? No, you just have to junk it. That's your problem. Wow, when's they that going to start? Care. When's that going to start? It's already started. Oh. Well, this car now, by November, this car you are see driving with no noise, quiet, yeah. this car is no use by November. By November. They want me to trash this car for wow. no reason. Wow. To go and get the latest models car. Look at the streets. There's no job. Yeah. 
there's no job for taxi driver. Taxi driver now are going looking for a regular job now because Uber have taken everything. No taxi. People wait on the, on the, on, you see everybody on the phone waiting for taxi. Yeah. yeah. They're waiting for Uber. That's what they're looking for. You see empty taxi passing you by. Yeah. We have, in DC alone, we have over 14,000 taxi in DC. And Uber is unregulated, so they can have up to 100,000 car out there. Yeah. So how do you expect the taxi driver to make a living, number one? Majority of us have a wife and children, and we have mortgage. Mm -hmm. How do we survive? How do we compete with those people? Yeah. Who, who is the hack inspector we harass the car driver? Your tire is low, your, your this is there, your car is dirty, your this. But that's not, there's no regulation for Huba. Mm -hmm. Either mm -hmm. their car is neat or dirty or whatever, no single regulation, no harassment of any kind. As I'm driving you right now, if I park on the side to answer a phone, hack inspector will come there, they can write me a ticket. In fact, if they find any other thing, they will just tow the car. Yeah. yeah. That is the harassment that the taxi driver face every single day. And they still want us to maintain all this thing, buy new latest model and paying all this. How are we going to pay for this thing? Money has to come out from somewhere. It's a double standard. It's a double yeah. standard. Absolutely. It's, it's a serious double standard. And I believe the elected people are not working with their six senses at all. Mm -hmm. They are not. Mm -hmm. Because if they, if they are, they should have taught this thing out very well. Look at the people from New York. Why buying a medallion for half a million dollars, mm -hmm. if anybody can put their car out there and doing the same thing, yeah. then what is the purpose of Medali? Yeah, exactly. They, they've got a much longer term agenda. They want to control transportation, that's it. Now that taxi driver has just explained to you how there are barriers to his business that are not shared by the guy who owns Uber. He believes, however, that this was something that was short-sightedness on the part of the city of Washington. This has been done, however, in every city throughout the world where Uber operates. It is not short-sightedness. It is part of a plan to aid Uber. Why would they do that, you ask? Well, of course, money can change hands behind the scenes, but there's also a larger agenda. Understand that municipalities everywhere have always been looking for a way to control transportation. Number one, that gives them control over you. That helps them, whenever you're dependent on them for a service, that gives them power and control over you. It lets them grow the government. They have tried bus services, subways, light rail. The people don't want them because they want the freedom and independence that having their own vehicle gives them. But Uber has said that he's going to not only get rid of the taxi services, but he's going to get rid of your individual car. The way he's going to do that, of course, is going to make it extremely cheap, but at the same time, the government is going to kick in with taxes. The insurance companies will kick in with increased insurance rates based on monitoring how you drive. But the other part of this is that they also want to control and restrict your movements. Part of what the Pope is talking about is a climate change agenda, and that, of course, dovetails into UN Agenda 21, the agenda for the 21st century. They sell it as sustainability, but it's about concentrating you into a few heavily, heavily populated mega urban centers. In order to do that, they have to control your movement. What better way to do that than with robot cars owned by one or two companies like Uber Ollie's? They'll also have the advantage of knowing everywhere that you go, because all that's necessary for that is that Uber share that information with the government. So that's the perfect storm. The combination of a capitalist who is bent on having a global monopoly, along with governments that want to make you dependent upon them and want to control and monitor your every movement. That's what we see. The Pope says, that this is a failure in our society, a failure of the free market, a failure of capitalism. Well, quite frankly, this society hasn't failed nearly as bad as the societies that he holds up as a model, places like Venezuela, countries where they can't even get food and medicine in their own country. That's why they're flooding our country for economic opportunity. Isn't it odd that the Pope would want to impose a kind of socialism and fascism that we've seen in his country of Argentina and in other areas of Latin America on the United States and blame us for economic failure? 
No, we haven't had a failure free market. We have failed to try to have